My name is Miracle Payne and I will be giving the introduction for my group's presentation. The people in my group are Melinda Moore, Melchizedek Porter, Grant Ferris, Brittany Bindabout, and Adrian Curtin. We are doing our presentation over the Volkswagen scandal. Volkswagen is a German-based automobile company that was founded in May 28th in 1937. This scandal started in 2008. The scandal involved cars that were being sold in America and they had a defeat device installed in the engines. This defeat device made it so that it could detect when it was being tested and it would change the performance accordingly. This caused the emissions to not be properly tracked and these cars were emitting up to 40 times the legal amount of nitrogen oxide and other pollutants. Six men were formally charged and a seventh has pleaded guilty. The seventh, seven men charged in this scandal were Heinz Jacob Muser, who is an executive showman, Jens Hadler, who is an engine expert, Richard Dorenkamp, who is an emissions specialist, Bernd Gottwies, who is a troubleshooter, Oliver Schmidt, who is a regulatory go-between, Jurgen Peter, who was in control of quality control, Rupert Stadler, who was a former CEO at Audi, and James Robert Ling, who was a software engineer. Their charges were defrauding the United States and Volkswagen customers, violating the Clean Air Act, and committing wire fraud. Volkswagen sold diesel cars that they said were safe and claimed to be environmentally conscious. A study by the Environmental Protection Agency showed that these diesel cars were using a defeat device. This device would make the cars emit less harmful gases in a lab setting, but when it was on the road, it would pollute at a significantly higher rate. The deception cost more than a monetary loss. It also risked the company's reputation. The company also stalled investigations as much as they could by lying and saying that it was a few cars that were defective when they knew all the diesel cars had a defeat device. The company also tried to lie about the executives knowing about the defeat device, though it has been shown that many executives not only knew about it, but also tried to keep it from becoming public knowledge. Volkswagen admitted to using the defeat device to make the diesel cars look like the cleaner option when in fact they were far from it. The EPA discovered that 482,000 Volkswagen cars in America were polluting 40 times more than they were permitted by law. Countries around the world started taking legal action against Volkswagen and their TDI diesel equipped cars and in 2015 Volkswagen stopped selling the TDI diesel cars. Volkswagen settled the charges against them for 10 billion dollars in 2016. This decision was upheld by the appellate court in 2018. Nine employees were sentenced to prison terms in the United States including Martin Wintercorn and Oliver Schmidt. Though Martin Wintercorn has not been extradited to the United States for his prison term. Martin Wintercorn is a 60-year-old experienced businessman when he takes chair of Volkswagen Group in 2007. Seven years later, in the spring of 2014, 67-year-old Wintercorn learns that his prize company has installed software in diesel vehicles with the ability to, to detect when emission tests are performed and falsify the results. Martin may have experience some sort of bounded ethicality. He is aware that he must protect the company's asset and handle the legalities of this delicate situation with care. With increasing desires to not disappoint the company, its shareholders, or his family, he coordinates a false emission software update in November of the same year. Diesel car sales are starting to incline in the United States and perhaps the software update was actually brought on by lost aversion. Wintercorn did not want Volkswagen to lose the traction it made in the United States and provided no second thought to any potential ethical outcome. Maybe the ethical issue was not clear and there was a distorted moral vision or worse ethical fading. Suppose this practice is common in the companies Mr. Wintercorn has enjoyed employment with and he has grown so accustomed to it, he cannot perceive the problem. Have you heard of Volkswagen Superman? He fought to save the career of innocent employees of the world's largest automobile manufacturers. 
these people are tangible. They have families, mortgages. They look like our superhero, Martin Wintercorn. His kryptonite, the abstract. The ozone layer, Volkswagen owners, the futures of the planet. Truly, Wintercorn is not our hero and may have been downright selfish. I mentioned before he was 67 years old when he learned of the issues and was creeping closer to retirement. Each day he would place one duck in front of the other in preparation. Wintercorn was incentive gaming, tiptoeing his way to a bigger pension. The second individual involved in the Volkswagen scandal is Oliver Smith. Oliver Smith is the general manager in charge of Volkswagen's environmental and engineering office in Michigan. Smith played an important part in the scandal because he led and managed the engineering team that created the defeat device. Smith also kept the investigators distracted for as long as he could to prevent them from finding the defeat device. He Smith destroyed some documents that was exchanged between him and the executives in order to keep the investigators from finding out about the defeat device. The first ethical trap that Smith has fallen for is obedience to authority. When the investigators came in to investigate the car, Smith asked the executives what to do. The executive decided that they were going to keep the defeat device a secret for as long as they could. Um, this is where Oliver Smith has fallen for obedience to authority. Smith listened to the executives and was given instruction and instructions and scripts every time he went in to meet with the investigator to prevent them um, from finding out about the defeat device. Smith felt pressured and like he had to tell, had to lie to the investigators in order to keep his job because the executives and CEOs were putting so much pressure on him to keep the defeat device covered up. The second ethical trap that Smith was involved in is ethical fading. Smith has fallen for ethical fading because he was so focused on keeping Volkswagen in the number one spot for the, for the, for the car manufacturing industry that he didn't realize the damage he was causing. Smith was focused on doing what he was told, um, hoping that it would lead to him getting a promotion, that he didn't realize the unethical choices he was making by choosing not to tell the investigators about the defeat device. He was focused not only on the company gains, but also his own personal gains, which allowed him to forget about his own ethical values. The third and final person we would like to talk about is Rupert Stadler. Stadler was the CEO of Audi, which is owned by Volkswagen. He also served as the chairman of the Audi Board of Management and was a member of the Volkswagen Board of Management. After being charged with fraud in June of 2018 due to his connection with the diesel scandal, he was relieved of his duties on both boards as well as being the CEO of Audi. He spent four months in jail before being released in October of 2018. Although prosecutors only believed he should be in jail because he was a risk to hinder the investigation, not because he had evidence that he had done something wrong, which is why he only spent four months in jail, unlike the other people in the scandal. The two, trips, the two traps that fit Stadler in this scenario were bounded ethicality and loss aversion. He was bounded ethically because he didn't realize how unethical it was to use the defeat devices in the cars because he was under so much pressure to come up with a clean diesel car for the company that he did whatever it took to make it happen. He said that at no point did he ever ask himself if he was doing the right thing. He just went through with it because it, it had to be done to make the company successful again. The second one was loss aversion, and he chose this. we chose this because Volkswagen was falling behind its competitors and needed something innovative to get them back on top. So the defeat devices motivated them to stay quiet and let the engineers move forward with the defeat device. Stadler knew that if they couldn't find a way to create a clean diesel car for the company, the, the company was going to continue to fall behind. By allowing the engineers to go, go forward with the defeat devices, they allowed for the company to get back on top until the public figured out that the defeat devices were what was causing the car to be clean, not the car itself. The Volkswagen scandal is a prime example of how companies and individuals fall into ethical trappings. In short, 
Volkswagen installed defeat devices in diesel engines. The purpose of this de device was to cheat on emissions testing and change the performance of the vehicles. The fault of this device caused the emissions to not be properly tracked, causing more harmful pollution at a higher rate. Volkswagen lied and said that only a few vehicles had this defeat device. However, this was not the case. In 2016, Volkswagen settled at a lawsuit of $10 billion. There were several people involved in this scandal. However, through this presentation, we looked closely and examined three different individuals and their ethical trappings. The three individuals that we studied were Oliver Schmidt, Rupert Stadler, and Martin Winkerton. We hope you enjoyed this presentation. Thank you.